Point of care ultrasound is being used during cardiac arrests and resuscitations with increasing frequency as the technology becomes more widely available and provider comfort with using ultrasound improves. One application for POCUS during cardiac arrests is the POCUS pulse check. This short video will explain the background, technique, limitations, and applications of using the POCUS pulse check in cardiac arrests. Early defibrillation and high quality CPR are the key ACLS interventions proven to have a mortality benefit in cardiac arrest. However, detection of a pulse by manual palpation is unreliable and ultimately not the most accurate way to determine whether or not CPR should be started or withheld. Numerous studies have demonstrated that both lay people and healthcare professionals are poor at accurately detecting a central pulse. Some problems with the manual pulse check include poor sensitivity. In other words, not feeling a pulse does not rule out that a pulse is actually present. Reasons you may not feel a pulse include a blood pressure that is too low to palpate, patient body habitus, malpositioning, and insensitive fingers. Poor specificity. In other words, feeling a pulse does not mean a pulse is actually present. Usually, this is caused by providers applying too much pressure with their fingers and actually feeling their own pulse. Poor interrater reliability. And pulse checks frequently extend beyond the recommended 10 seconds, likely due to difficulty determining a pulse in unresponsive patients. Unreliable manual pulse checks mean that CPR may be initiated inappropriately, withheld when it is indicated, and extended pulse checks lead to a de deleterious drop in coronary perfusion pressure. While presence of an arterial line waveform is ultimately the best way to tell whether or not your patient has a blood pressure, it is rare to have one in place in the pre-hospital or emergency department setting. A proposed alternative to the manual pulse check is the POCUS pulse check, in which an ultrasound probe is used to detect a pulse at either the carotid or femoral artery. There are several methods of performing the POCUS pulse check described in the literature. The simplest technique is to place the linear ultrasound probe over the carotid artery and observe for pre presence or absence of pulsatility in the artery. The carotid artery can be found anterior to the sternocleidomastoid muscle within the anterior cervical triangle. A patient with a pulse will have a central artery that appears to pulsate on the screen, whereas a patient without any significant perfusion will have an artery without pulsations that collapses with minimal transducer pressure. In this video clip, you can see the internal jugular vein on screen right in the near field. The carotid artery is the pulsatile vessel to screen left and far field from the IJ. In this clip, the operator has applied downward pressure with the probe to compress the vein, while the artery remains patent and pulsatile. Compression is a simple maneuver to perform to help identify the carotid artery. Remember, if the patient has no pulse, the carotid artery will also collapse with transducer pressure and will not be pulsatile. Using color Doppler has also been studied to look at flow through the carotid artery. However, this adds time and complexity and is not strictly necessary for identification of a pulse. As an aside, you can also apply this technique at the femoral artery, but access to the groin during an arrest with CPR ongoing might be more limited. So what does the evidence say of the utility of the POCUS pulse check? A 2019 randomized controlled crossover study out of Ottawa compared time to carotid pulse detection using ultrasound versus manual palpation after a 15-minute teaching session, including to providers who had never used ultrasound before. Results showed that POCUS pulse checks were not slower than manual pulse checks, providers had a higher first attempt success rate using ultrasound, and there was less variability in time to pulse detection. A 2022 prospective study found that pulse checks using carotid artery compression with an ultrasound probe were faster compared to manual palpation, and the time to determine ROSC was significantly shortened to 0.44 times the manual palpation time. Although these studies are promising, there are several limitations of the POCUS pulse check to be aware of. First, just as with a manual pulse, we still don't know if the pulse detected on ultrasound is perfusing with a map of 70, or let's say a map of 30.
In other words, it is unclear whether pulsatility detected in a central artery corresponds to a certain blood pressure. But the same can be said for a pulse detected by manual palpation. Contrary to common belief and old ATLS guidelines that a palpable carotid pulse indicates a systolic blood pressure of approximately 30, studies using invasive and non-invasive blood pressure monitoring showed that these guidelines were inaccurate and likely underestimated the degree of hypotension. The second limitation is the issue of time. A 2017 study showed that using ultrasound during CPR almost doubled the pulse check time, leading to delays in chest compressions. Granted, this study was looking at obtaining actual cardiac ultrasound views rather than looking at a central artery, but it is important that any new technique does not delay the intervention that we know improves mortality. Proponents of the POCUS pulse check have suggested several methods to help minimize interruptions in compressions. They suggest assigning a dedicated team member skilled in using ultrasound to acquire images during compressions, record five seconds of the artery during the pulse check, immediately resume compressions, and review the recorded clip once CPR has been resumed. The final limitation to note is that it is unclear whether using POCUS in cardiac arrests improves long-term neurologically intact survival. In other words, although there is evidence that ultrasound can help us more accurately detect a pulse and likely does not lengthen pulse check time, there is no clear evidence yet to say if this has any positive impact on patient-centered outcomes. So what does this all mean? Here's where use of the POCUS pulse check can aid in a more nuanced and thoughtful resuscitation, but not necessarily one that is supported by published guidelines. Several experts in critical care and emergency medicine that advocate for the use of the POCUS pulse check describe its utility in determining whether a patient presumed to be in an arrest actually has any cardiac output. If there is cardiac, organized cardiac activity on a monitor and there is a pulse that is not palpable but present using POCUS, it is likely reasonable to treat these patients as presenting in a profound shock state rather than a true cardiac arrest. Instead of giving multiple boluses of epinephrine as per ACLS algorithms, whose high beta adrenergic effects may lead to dysrhythmias, increased myocardial oxygen demand, ischemia, and ultimately poor neurological outcomes, experts suggest giving no more than three bolus doses of one milligram of epinephrine, initiating a titratable vasopressor infusion, and giving the patient volume. One caveat to note is that although this approach makes sense physiologically, it is difficult to study and there is no clear evidence that this strategy leads to better patient outcomes. In a similar vein, using ultrasound during resuscitation can help to identify ROSC, guide our ongoing management, and avoid agents or interventions that could potentially cause harm. One other potential use for the POCUS pulse check is its utility in the pre-hospital or transport setting, where manual pulse detection is even more challenging. When running an arrest in the back of a helicopter mid-flight, POCUS may be an option to aid in pulse detection. In summary, this short video has described the technique, evidence, limitations, and potential applications of integrating the POCUS pulse check into cardiac arrest management. The POCUS pulse check is not part of published ACLS algorithms, and there is still research needed to determine whether ultrasound can provide a more efficient and reliable means of detecting a pulse. However, recent studies are promising, and there are clinical scenarios such as transport where the POCUS pulse check can provide valuable information to improve management of the sickest patients.